Ah, hello there, Traveler, and welcome back to the world of Chimaticus, where through the roles we play, we spin our tale. This is our original D&D 5e session here on Forward on the Saves. I am Alexander, your weaver of tales, and as always, I am joined by my companions. Tyler, John, hello. Cassie, Viper, and Dylan. So, without further ado, hang up your cloak, grab a drink, and sit back as we dive into this chapter of Chimaticus. Oh. For the, uh, for, the intro, for the for the intro at the end where like the little energy does the thing, I went. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, God. Anyways, um, welcome back, traveler. So, where we last left off, hoplites, you made it to the Iron Port after defending the city of Kalesh. Now. This war slash civil war is continuing behind you now. You have moved on to different purposes. As moving to Alvaron. Does it feel like it's <laughs> not behind you? It's more like it happening. It feels like it's like it. right there. <laughs> um, it's like it's, it's I feel like we just coming up we're just ignoring us. it. <laughs> but uh Hector, you made it to the Iron Port with your friends and regrouped, got a, a better handle on the situation on what is going on in Alvaron. Later that day, <laughs> later that day, you all uh, went north of the Iron Port, just inside of Alvaron, the parts that's still untouched by the darkness that is Zerikaz up in Iron Crest. You set up your Temple of the Gods, shielded the eyes of the gods from seeing uh, Zasha, who made an appearance first time in a while. You learned a couple of things that Wormbreakers still around. And Keijo has a lead on them. Through your magic and the magic of Zasha, you were able to find where he's at. And the plan is to go help him out. He is at uh, somewhere on the Jotun's Grasp, the biggest mountain range within uh, the Kingdom of Serum off to the west. Dwarven Kingdom, the Wormbreaker's Kingdom. So, with that in mind, Hector, you took a step outside and enjoyed Alvaron for the first time in well over a year. You saw a lone rider on a horse, kind of approaching down near where the river runs through Alvaron to the south. The rider collapsed off the side, and the horse continued on. You made your way over to this downed soldier. Arrow embedded in the neck, dead. However, the body wriggled back to life, and the hand reaches out to you for an assault. And that's where we're going to pick up. So, Hector. For shits and giggles, roll initiative. Initiative! I wouldn't have my armor on. Ooh, you wouldn't. Uh, not like it matters. <laughs> he gets whacked anyways. Well, I think... I don't... I think my armor's what gave me the initiative. Yes, it gave you the alert fee benefits. Mm -hmm. Yes, but I still have advantage. Yeah. So just uh, the you take shocky off five. Did for me. That one's a six. 
Is that with advantage? That one's uh, 19. 19 oh. will beat the 11 I got. So, Hector. <clears throat> the soldier of Alvaron reaches out to strangle you around the throat. Oh, God. But Personal. you're faster. What do you do? <laughs> uh, I guess he tries to reach his hands up. So, like, I'm, I'm trying to get a, like, a grasp of this guy like, yeah. towards me. So, am I thinking, like, you thinking, like, one of those, like, low-level RPG kind of really slow weak zombies or are we talking like this guy just turned into like dawn of the dead level you know like parkour crazy dude yeah it's like is he is he that. like doing like is he reaching up like this or is he reaching up like this you know oh he's reaching up very fast uh he's very agile right now so yeah okay like normal people yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't say they're like world war z zombies where they just like make an ant pile of themselves oh, God. but um more yeah definitely definitely more agile than your uh than your traditional uh walking dead so. Cool. Just thank you. Trying to get a good idea. Like I guess as he reaches up for me. Uh I guess I'd fall back to kind of let him kind of get like more like most more, more parallel to perpendicular to the ground. Okay. And I will um I'm gonna bonus action uh thunder smite, I'm gonna like uppercut gun punch him. Okay. Ouch. All right. Roll to hit. Dear, 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 dear. Unarmed strike. 18. 18. That'll hit. Is he, uh... So, uh... He, uh... Ha! Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, strength saving throw. All right. Strength saving throw of 19. <laughs> That is a, uh, that's a 13. Okay. It fails. So as I, like, I step back, I bring him up a little bit, and I gut punch him, I launch him, like, 10 feet up and back. <laughs> Sound of thunder. Any damage to that? Yes, sir. That would be... Ooh, pretty good roll. 8 thunder damage. Okay. And then six bludgeoning for the unarmed strike. And then since my fist counts as a weapon, another three divin divine radiant damage. Okay. That is going to do it. Oh, snap. Yeah, so. <laughs> Just explodes. <laughs> you punch it away. Um, you don't nice. punch a literal hole in its uh, stomach, but you do punch it back. You can see it. Like just crumple under your force. And as it lands uh, about 10 or so feet back, it is lifeless a second time, but this time unmoving. However, right. you see uh, the arrow that was embedded in it has loosened and fallen on the ground in front of you, between you and it. The arrow has a message scrolled around it. Oh man, that's that's hardcore. I bet I know what it says. I want you to write down a prediction. Write down a prediction. Everybody plays your best. <laughs> I'm gonna say it's it has, contains four words. <laughs> you lean down. You pick up the message. And as you unscroll it, as predicted, however, you see five words. Oh, no. It's an extra. Your telltale, you have no right. But addressed directly to you, Hector. You have no right. Now it just feels personal. <laughs> he'll uh, he'll just be like, well, yeah, that was. Yeah, <laughs> 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 but 
<laughs> some lich mob. That's a that's there. a Dylan comment. Hector will just he'll take that out. And he'll oh, rip okay. it up. Never mind. <clears throat> he'll go and close the guy's eyes. And, you know, say give him some like final prayers and say sorry. You know, he'll walk back through the tower. All right. You head back inside. And it is time for rest, I believe. To finish a long rest? Yeah. Excellent. Oh. So. Something else. That was long. Did I... Unless there is anything you all wish to do, I believe this day is pretty spent. So. In the comfort and safety of the Temple of the Gods, procured by your very own Rona Thimbly, you all sleep a sound night with a full night's rest. And upon waking the following morning, what is it you wish to do? Is it morning or is it afternoon? Because we went to because bed around like noon, right? Because we had the meeting at noon. Mm -hmm. And we jump back, time zones, jump forward. It was like one o'clock. You spent a good bit of the day, though, I thought. No. So what time is it? We, it's like now like eight or nine o'clock at night. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Like after the rest? Yeah, we, that, that's after the yeah, long rest. Yeah, because he said, oh, like, everything else happened. That's right. Yeah. Because that's Hector, right. You Hector were going to like, wait oh, till well, nighttime well. and do the jump. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because we had to. Yeah. Because now it's morning for yeah. that group, right? No, yeah. No. You are right. It's just, the, it's it's just so we have long late. rest, so, like, we have spells and stuff. We yeah. have health. <laughs> no, that's that, right. That meeting was a long day. And yeah. then not a long day at the same time. It was time. a long day. <laughs> yeah, right. A long naval battle and then everything. Yeah. In a matter of an no, hour. That is crazy. right. I was like, wait, we, we skipped a whole nother What day? is time but an illusion? Anyways, uh -huh. so, right. um, how, are, how, how do we know that everything is real time and not real? You all do sleep. You wake up <laughs> later that night. Ready? To jump to serum. Mm -hmm. So, we'll pick up there. How we doing it? What are we doing? Well, it's on our resume. I'm just, uh, well, yeah, just to make sure there's no mis like, just to make sure there's no chances. Can't really afford to take chances right now. We should let Rona do her, yeah, sending message, a visual one, to Kajo again. That way you can see where we're going, and there's no chance for it to fail. Know exactly where we need to be. All right, I'll send. It'll very high level spell. I think that's got... actually. I don't even think that helps. I think it's still has the same percentage is it i thought if you could see where you're going it would be uh but he would have uh, to cast the spell while seeing where we're going right so she can do the thing to where she can have like she can see around where he is at that time so like he can be in that spell see where he's at right now and then cast it while it's still up i i don't see anything saying like if you see it there's very familiar seen casually viewed once description viewed once is what it would be well, if you go above the bar, if you you automatically succeed if you can see where you're going. So if since I've seen it since I since I saw it in the vision, I saw it using Zasha, and if I see it again, that'd be seen casually. Or well, would that be very familiar? Well, what I'm saying is like right, if you can see a mountain, you'd be like, Oh, I'm teleporting to the mountain. So you get there. But you're actively looking at it, not like a vision or anything you're like oh i need to go here Poof. i think that's what dylan's trying to say yeah but i just want y'all to know i don't think seeing it actually helps so i didn't want alex to roll and then we just pop on another mountain somewhere else and it'd be like a similar area but we're yet in like all right the time to strike is now so they're waiting on you guys all right then i think we just go if it doesn't improve our chances any i can save a sixth level yeah, I'd rather you save a six level than us uh, 
try and help. Um, all right, everybody ready? Let's do it. Okay. All right. And I cast teleport, aiming for the mountain. All right. The cave that they're in. Who is uh, bringing everybody? How are we doing this? I'm bringing everybody. Okay. Including everybody. Maxon. <laughs> yeah, so this would be Circeus with Hector, Icaros, mm -hmm. Eldon, Cassie, Abe, mm -hmm. Eclipse, and Maxon. Yeah, that is everybody, right? That's everybody? That's everybody. Okay. So. Wow, you're about to get teleported to Chimaticus. It's crazy, Cassie. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> this didn't end well for me anytime, so. Cheers. Uh, let's hope Alex rolls a good one. This is my one. favorite part. <laughs> like I love doing this. I don't know why. I, really <laughs> you're a good time. I, hate, I hate that this isn't the person part. casting its role. Nah, I don't. I love it. It's a lot more. It's a lot more interesting. <laughs> like, how does the weave itself go? Let's see the. Uh, let's see what happens. If I become a rock, I'm gonna be so sad. No, we're probably going to get merged into a rock. No, we'll bounce off a mountain and then <laughs> do it again. Bounce off another mountain, do it again. No, this is no, how we end up another Lich Wife. We'll crisscross uh, yeah. and triangulate exactly where we need to go. <clears throat> boom, boom. Guys, he's thinking boom. too much. Math, he's trying guys. to get a location. He is. Uh, oh my gonna... god, no! You're right! This is going to hurt, y'all. <laughs> so, uh... I mean, that's the look of, like, of where's, fly, like right? the, where's the shittiest place I could pros possibly send them oh, up no, in this rolling, zone? Oh, no, he's rolling again! I fall, like that's this. where. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> hey, there's a civil war on this mountain. Let's send them right in the middle of the battle. Yeah. Very familiar counts as, a, counts as a place you've seen very often, a place you have carefully studied, or a place you can see when you cast out. Oh, guys, look, Would I have carefully Kraken's studied that? be very okay. familiar. Would I have been carefully studying it whenever I use Zasha? That was the Would plan. Yeah, so we're having to go off very familiar, right? I I think mm -hmm. the I issue just is to add oh. my tough feet, and now I'm at one forty eight, y'all. There we go. I okay. think the issue is Tyler. So it's exciting. more of a. It's more like you. It's like we're only seeing the cave. We're not seeing like where on the side of the mountain into the cave type deal. It's like oh, we're in a cave. It just looks like a weird thing to do, right? Because, I mean, like, if you have an item that's from a specific area or you, someone can literally describe it to you where it is, you think being able to see it, describe it to yourself, would count as a better form of that, but yeah, whatever. Magic is Where'd funky. we go, Alex? Where'd we go? They go to show it to you, but it's like Renaissance-era portraits. Oh, yeah. hell yeah. It's like the it's drawing. Van Gogh around. showed it to you, and you're like, I don't understand what that means. It's literally cubism. <laughs> <laughs> the original design of a giraffe was quite hilarious. Oh, we're taking damage. Oh, right? we're Here definitely we go. taking damage. We shouldn't have talked. This never goes well. What if he does all this and says, you get there fine? I'm, gonna be I'm not putting it outside of the realm of possibility. He was no <laughs> Worst case, I get to play a dwarf, so like, I'm down so for whatever. So you all feel the gravitational pull towards uh, the, the magical circle and... Your vision begins to skew <clears throat> as you feel propelled at a very fast pace into the west. I puke. Gross. <laughs> Towards, uh, for everywhere. Oh, uh, does it just go forward and then back? <laughs> Towards the oat's grasp in serum. <laughs> All of your visions then go dark. Because it's nighttime? The <laughs> eight of you <laughs> are inside some place where there is no light. Are we dissolving in acid. Is there a smell no. associated? I'll tell you in a second. Okay. Not the belly of the dragon. It is quiet. A sense of claustrophobia comes over all of you. Oh, 
there is no light from the stars. However, one of you knows mountains well, Hector. You're in one. <gasps> oh no. That's all you can tell. Unsure exactly where you're at. You all know that you are near each other. You can hear each other's scuffling, each other's breathing. But for those of you that do not have um, the means to see in the dark, even shades of gray, it is pitch black. So, that is all you can tell um, now. Can Dude, I cast even light people on my who hand? have dark vision can't. Hold on, let me go around. Uh, okay. No, you can still see shades of gray. It's still just very dark. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, if you have dark vision, yeah, you can see it's just this is very uh, very poor still. Um, and Cerseus. I want to cast light just like on my arm okay. or armor or something. On the, uh, the gauntlet? Yeah, sure. We'll go with light the gauntlet. Will, light will illuminate the area around you. The eight of you see that you are definitely inside some type of cave. It is dank in here. It's quiet. And it's very dusty. The first thing that you notice, I will say, uh, Hector would actually catch on to first. At one point, this was a a mine shaft. There was an excavation here at one point. The the walls are not natural. Where you are is a dead end. Only one way to go. But from where you stand, you can tell this is not a natural cave formation. Outside of that, there are no remnants of any life whatsoever down here. So that's what you see with the light. You're you're kind of you're kind of in an area that might be about maybe thirty feet in diameter, and on one end of that kind of oblong uh, area that you're in is a path that seems to go up, and that's it. That's all you see. Well, obviously we weren't aiming for here. Um, but before I use my other teleport that I have should we see where this leads and maybe we're close yeah Rona? um yeah that seems like a good idea let me get a marching order for that um because I'll have I have the light I guess I can go first and I'll have my wings up and be flying all right uh I will say there's not enough room for flight here there's only about 10, okay. 15 feet of uh, of height here. Okay. So. I'll just walk then. You lead the way. Second. Mm. I feel like it should be Hector, since he would be most knowledgeable. Mountain man. Yeah, mountain man, <laughs> take me to the moon. Come here, mountain man. What? <laughs> All right. After Hector. I'll go after Hector. Okay. And I want to be in the boot. Huh? I want to be in the back. The you want to be the caboose? I'll, I wanna, be, I'll, the I'll caboose. be right with Eldon, and I'll have okay. cast light. Sure, sure. Um, okay. <laughs> um, it's blue. <laughs> blue. The, uh, uh, Can you make it I almost said the name. Eyes. Maxon is going to uh, hang in the back with you guys. Uh, Icarus, I imagine, is uh, by Hector's side and Abe by yours. So... As a group, you travel through this area. You make your way down this path, and it gets uncomfortable for anything more than a single file line. So as you guys are progressing, you begin to smell... Uh, something a little different. The temperature 
begins to increase just slightly. And as you make it a little bit farther within what you imagine is the mountain range of the Jotun's Grasp, the first hint of sulfur hits your nostrils. Oh, great. And Circeus, <clears throat> something. <gasps> oh no! Doesn't feel right. You hear something, just gently whisper your name, just outside. <gasps> the reach of the light in front of you. What do you do? Well, everyone, time to go, time to go. Um, Let's let's get out of here. Come on, gather around, gather around. What's going on? Why, why are we having to hurry? <laughs> this is this is not where we want to be. Not where we want to be. Um, Eclipse, did you just say this is where we need to be? I can't hear shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, there's maybe this much room. Like, you guys can squeeze past each other if you, like, squeeze. But, yeah. I'm, um... I am piggybacking. <laughs> I'm gonna cast Teleport again, attempting to get us to the cave we're supposed to be in. But I'm getting us out of here. This is my last one, so I hope it works. Do we have to be in touch? Oh, what? We have to be within a certain range. We could be touching them. Don't smile like that. Don't we are not that. ready for don't, that fight. We are smile. not ready for that mm -mm. fight. Don't mm -mm. smile like that. <laughs> don't do that. Please. Hurt us. Why? This decides whether or not I buy coffee in the morning. So. We're buying coffee. As you scuttle back uh, to kind of get into the middle of everybody, for everybody to get within your range, you hear it again. Oh. And then you hear this nail on rock scuttling towards you. No one else can hear it. Only you. As you get back, you turn back towards the way that you were heading and you see a pair of red eyes staring back at you. Just nope, beyond nope, the way. Like and then you cast it and you are out. <sighs> and then everyone will suffer 11 bludgeoning damage. As a mishap occurs. The face of the... As you <laughs> through the rock and stone within the Jotun's Grass Mountain. It feels like you all just like were shot out hitting every rock along the way. You all feel that. Everyone, animals included. 11 bludgeoning damage. If we end up in the same place. <laughs> Alright, you guys take damage and you're back in that tunnel you just left. <laughs> Now, and you lose an eighth level spell. An spot. additional <laughs> twenty bludgeoning damage. Jesus! As 20? you make your way out, you <laughs> teleport in the opposite direction, smashing into the top of the mountain, similar to what happened to Var forever ago. Um, <laughs> funny. Uh, just, uh, have a lot of mishaps today. No. Actually, uh, <laughs> with an eighty-eight. You guys are back in the tunnel. You land on target. No, thank you. Yes! <laughs> so. I like, I sit up and I'm like, I need a longer nap <laughs> and just fall back. Uh, the, the, the eight of you oh, God. <laughs> are alongside a kind of a cliff edge on this mountain. Um, from the side that faces out to the horizon, you can tell that the sun set opposite that. You're facing the east, towards Alberon. You can see the mountain range. You can make out some distant features. 
the landscape. As you turn to your left and face sort of the north, just around this bend, you can see a little bit of light and the smell of some cooked meats. There's a campfire here. As you go around the bend and approach, Hector, you see a very familiar giant face of your friend, Before we... Keijo. Before we move to go see them, like, as uh, Eclipse is saying, like, I need a nap, Cersei's is just going to look up, like, if we didn't get out of there, we would have been in an eternal nap. Ooh, that sounds kind of Eternal just nap. A Sign nap? me up. I'm Sign me up. I could sleep <laughs> Sign all me up. stretch. Wake me up when September's over. <laughs> all right. So, you, you are where you're supposed to be. What do we do? I use my lay on hands to get across the bigger pool. Okay. <laughs> I'll be over in a minute. I feel worried about myself. All right. <laughs> Just gonna like, sh- I'm back. Come <laughs> <laughs> on, pop the eye back out in, uh, into place. <laughs> um, All right, go ahead, uh, Cerseus. Uh, <clears throat> while we're walking around that corner, too, Cerseus wants to go to Rona if that's okay. Yeah, okay. Um, Rona, I didn't, I haven't said it yet, but. That that was that was him. He was he's coming after me. Um, if we didn't get out of there, I may have we may have had to fight him again. I I don't think anyone else saw it, but there was one of Baphomet's demons there coming after us. I heard his screech, and he was calling my name. If we didn't get out of there, we may have, may not have made it out. So I just wanted you to know that that time might be coming soon. Um, and I want your judgment on whether to tell everyone this as well. I mean, I, I don't think there's any harm in telling everyone else. I mean, we all know what we signed up for, so. Good to know that clock's ticking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll tell everyone once we get settled, but I just wanted to bring it through you first. Sure. Footsteps approach, but you don't hear them until they're just beside you. Brayla the Huntress. Oh, God. Brayla! <sighs> you want to give me a heart attack? You came. Of course we did. You called. Oh. We have meats if you want meats. Sounds lovely. Come. Someone will be very excited to see you, Hector. As you guys turn around the uh, bend of this mountain and see the what force is here, you see a good handful of the children in the north. Not all of them, though. They are not all here. You see... Keijo... taking a big bite out of something... <laughs> red. <laughs> um, as his eyes look up and he sees you, Hector, he stands up with this piece of mutton still in his mouth. <laughs> And he just walks over <laughs> and gives you, uh, starts off with a very firm uh, handshake around the uh, forearm of the arm, but then he pulls you in and holds you pretty tight. It's grace all over your hair. And then you hear the, like, <laughs> squelch of the meat as he reaches his other hand around to, like, grab the bone. <laughs> oh, I missed you. Glad you're back, Hector. 
Good to see you too. He like <laughs> retracts. <laughs> a little bit of meat just like slides on your ear. Gross. <laughs> <It's> like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Takes it off you. But uh then you see sitting kind of tucked away in the corner just outside the fire's reach Kerrigan Stormcaller stands to greet you all looks at all of you with familiarity and a questionable face towards the cat and the black knight You make too many new friends. We're very amiable. It will be your downfall. Probably. Speaking of friends, Wormbreakers, you ready to hear everything we know? Yes. yes. Come sit as you all I sit around the fire. Kerrigan goes into detail. Your trusted friend was taking us home through the land that we are not welcome to seek refuge in yours. Upon the way, we found a felled messenger, a real chance encounter. He held information about the taken king and his son, heirs to Serum. They've harbored a grudge for a long time, and I still do. But the look on their face when I rescue them, I think, is worth it. I told Kejo we will not follow him unless we do this one task. We knew to expect some type of resistance, but uh, what I did not know, there is... Another dwarf, another dwarf. Last name, Thundermane. You know? No, he's dead. His home is just above us. Or at least one of them. A refuge of his own. A place that apparently he frequents, but I guess not anymore. So, we traveled up, and it is but another hour's journey north, farther up into the mountain. We waited. We do not know what kind of resistance we will find, but we are happy you are here. So, Our bellies are full, and you all look a little beat up, but mostly rested. Are we ready? Just one question. Are we planning a full, like, frontal assault? We're not trying to sneak in. <laughs> That's what I thought. Grayla will do some sneaking. The rest of us, not so much. Join her if you want. No, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> so, are we ready? I think so. Let's go. All right. He speaks out in Dwarvish. Um, oh, sorry. They speak more giant. So, uh, I can't remember. Does anyone here speak giant? Mm -mm. Okay. No. He speaks out in giant. Uh, you guys don't know what he's saying. 
but Inga Dinga Dirk. Inga Dinga Dirgan. Uh the twenty or so uh um warriors of Skyraya stand up. Brayla included Kajo with them. And they begin to head further up this path. And you are with them. So, you said roughly an hour. Is there anything anyone wants to do in that time? It's going to sound like a dumb question, but how rough is the wind, like, on this mountain? It's pretty windy. Is it, like, enough to threaten to, like, if we, like, go too far? I feel like if you were to lose your balance, the wind would probably topple you. Okay. I guess the important question would be a uh, scale of this. How many of us and the Ebony Scouts telling us how many of them? Talking about how many of the Sky Rays? Yeah, I would have uh, made a point to ask Windcaller to see if um, how many we're bringing in the assaults and to see if he knew about the approximation of what we're going up against. No. Um, he would have told you he only knows the location. But he doesn't know how many are there. He doesn't know what to expect. And as far as it goes for what he has, he has 20 soldiers by his side. Brela and Keijo. So a total of 23 that you are coming up on, that you came up on today. Right. Um, and then th- you ate. Is it dark? Yes, it is dark. Um, even though you kind of... I guess kind of swapped uh, time zone, so to speak, but it only got a little bit lighter, not by much. Pretty much the sun just set. Uh, against the, I know it's an hour up, but against the night sky, can we see like any artificial light or light pollution kind of covering up the stars of the night sky? Nothing too much, actually. Um, it's pretty clear up here. So no giant beacons. Okay, that's good. Yeah, no, nothing huge. Up Sounds of inhabitation. Yeah, yeah, this is like, what? Oh, there's the castle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> look at all that light. <laughs> Found it. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like when the stadium's going, you're like, you can look off and be like, yep, they got all the floodlights turned yeah. on. All right. As we're walking, probably about half an hour in, Rona's going to call Cerseus and Eldon to her. You two, come here. Whack! I'll like, yes, like float off to the side and like come back and then go back on the mountain. I'm gonna yeah. touch both of them on one on each shoulder and cast mm-hmm. Death Ward on both of them. Oh, like we're not doing this again. Huh. We good? Doing that again. <laughs> yeah. You do have trouble with mountains. It's my turn. <laughs> yeah, quit being so stingy, Dylan. Yeah. I'm like taking all the deaths, Jeez. guys. God, I want one. No, that's mainly me. <laughs> I gotta stop. I gotta start sharing. You get it up, man. You get it up. No one's dying. <laughs> you don't know that. It was only the one time. It was horrific. Uh, it's only been the last seven. <laughs> All right. Here's Joe. And that lasts for eight hours, by the way. So, Hector, you call out. Thank you. He will uh, slow a little bit and make sure that he is walking by your side. Hector. <coughs> Do you remember uh, that northwestern lumber mill village, the Cobalt Siege? You take the left. Consider it taken. As. I guess he would have. <laughs> In my head, he was already on your left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he knows what it means. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You guys continue on. Anyone else? Anything? I'm being stealthy. Okay. You, where do you want to be kind of in this herd? Kind of 
like if it's kind of like this, it would be like up ish. On it's the more like a maybe like two by like two people at a time, maybe two by two. Yeah, hurrah, hurrah. Okay. Um, <laughs> where's the black knight at? It's kind of <laughs> gotta talk him up. A bit closer, closer to the back. Okay, I, I'm gonna be with him. Okay. Oh. All right. And I'm just watching. Okay. Everything. <laughs> Staring at him. Oh, oh, you just he's eyeballing watching. this man. <laughs> Not even look where you're watching. No, his head turned ninety it's degrees. When he's like, does the stare thing with his hat, and he's like being all cute. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> all right. Trying to get myself a man. There you go. <laughs> Cuffing season. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> You guys continue forward. In the front, Kerrigan. But farther up beyond him, Brayla. The way that this goes is you are walking through, kind of, it starts off by walking around a mountain, almost kind of on a cut off edge. As you kind of turn back in, um, you are heading kind of back under two uh, peaks that kind of come up, and it there's a crevice between, and you are heading through that crevice. You can see Brayla atop one of the crevices. Like, you <laughs> briefly see her pop up before she, like, disappears again, keeping the best lookout eye that she can. And as you all continue forward, one of the uh, uh, children of Skyreus, the Skyreus warriors in the front, uh, drop something. They stop, lean down, pick it up. And as he tries to move forward to kind of catch up with the group, No, you definitely wouldn't hear it. You're definitely closer to the back. Damn. Um, I'll let everyone but Eclipse roll a perception check. I am watching. Yeah. 26. Holy crap. Okay, Hector. I have. That's Icarus. I have Got a 10. Okay. John? 11. And Cerseus? 21. All right. Cerseus and Rona, you hear Brayla shout, wait. As you see her run back up on the hill towards you guys. You can see her eclipse when she pops back up. But then you hear a massive roar of thunder. Oh god, this is a rock slide. You hear a massive roar of thunder. It begins to rain. Fast. And within seconds, you are caught up in a very heavy storm. As Brayla runs back, like she holds out her hand kind of down towards you all in this little caravan that you're leading um, or that Kerrigan's leading. Kerrigan looks down at his feet, steps back. And as you guys kind of catch up towards the front, you can see there was a rune that was triggered. There is a storm that has been summoned now. Oh. So... Mm. I don't have time for that. <laughs> Fitting for a storm wizard. Um, <laughs> but as you guys continue, Kerrigan will turn back to you all. I think the element of surprise is gone. <laughs> Pulls out a big axe. Wheels it in both hands and then begin, uh, begins to continue forward a little bit quicker this time. Brayla continues her path. And within moments, you all are drenched. 
great. the clips. I'm hissing. <laughs> um, like does quietly this, to does myself. This impede, just... Like, does this make it more treacherous for us walking wise? Not not in the path you're at right now. Okay. If you were going around the edge, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, the slipping <laughs> might be a problem. But here this it's, seems it's... like more of like a warning system. Yeah. Okay. You triggered the alarm. Well, gotcha. not you, but someone um, triggered. Yeah. <laughs> Collective we. <laughs> I wanted the alarm triggered. <laughs> so, as you guys continue along, you cross one more bend, and then you see atop a hill, or top a hill, atop a uh, kind of a point. It's not the top of one of these mountains of the Oten's Grass, but definitely like a small version of it. You see a castle. The tower, more like. Mm -hmm. As you turn to face it, lightning strikes behind it. The tower of Damien Thundermane. In the second lightning strike, you see a number of individuals perched up on ledges and rocks as sentries. You wait. Another strike. They're all gone. Kerrigan Stormcaller stands at the front, waiting. Waiting long enough for if one of you want to step up and do something, now's the time. This is not the right music for this event. <laughs> is Brayla ahead of us? Like, is she? Is she still leading the pack? You don't know where she's at. Okay. We okay. Cool. 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 Um. Ah. This is not really my gig, y'all. <laughs> Somebody who can hit stuff, go. How far away are we? <laughs> hmm? How far away are we? From the tower. From the tower. Mm-hmm. But it looks about 300 feet. Mm -hmm. Hot minute. Uh, can I try... Ew. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, Elba, there you go. go ahead. Uh, can I try and see where the sentries may have gone, if they look like they took cover? Well, perception check. Uh, and then also on top of that, looking to see if there's, like, this scuff marks where, like, sentries normally would be of, like, crossbows or what type of weapons they may be using for us. Uh, 24. 24. As you look up, you see, as the lightning strikes, you see their silhouette against, but your eyes still adjust to the darkness after the flash of light. That when they do, and you see the, uh, the second lightning strike, they are gone after. So, they didn't drop down. It looks like they might have slinked off to the side, left or right, because they are kind of high atop a pathway leading up to uh, the tower. Yeah. So, Sorry. when Burning you said that, I was like, wait, important detail. <laughs> You're good. Um, okay. Anyone want to do oh, anything? hold on, hold Third on. Third strike, that did I see been, anything else um, with that? Mm -mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Hector. Oh, uh, so this isn't like a path with a cliff on the side of it. We're like, there's mountains on either side. It's not so much mountains. It's more like you're kind of like it. There, yeah, there's, there's like a there's, wall. There, there's an earthen yes. wall on either side. Yeah, it's more like jagged rocks on either side. You are in kind of a uh, a crevice leading up to this tower. Like it's like you're in a trench heading down it, and there are high walls to either side made of jagged rocks. You can see these sentries, these humanoids, whatever they are, the silhouettes of them, maybe ten or so. Ten on each side or ten total? It's quick. You can't tell. Um, I was really thinking. There's like a ghost Oh, no, you're good. Uh, you see him kind of sprinkled around in that first strike. As the second strike comes and goes, they are gone. You do not know where they went. The tower, about 300 feet away, through this little trench that has the walls on either side. Your call. What do you do? How wide is this? Uh, about, we'll say 20 feet. 
thinking. Hector. Got to get out of this trench. Uh, you take left, I take right, and we take a person with us. Like up to the top so we can kind of duke it out. Oh, you come with me, and I'll drop you off on the right, and I'll take the left. Well, obviously, I can still, uh, I still got my boots. So I can, I can hop up there. You hear oh, I've you had a scream. A woman's scream. A warrior's scream. Very well. Like an attack scream? Or a, oh shit. I've been stabbed. They got the. I'm, I'm <laughs> heading to the, the scream. <laughs> okay. It's up and to the left some. So, as the scream goes around, um, I am, imagine, uh, Cersei is here. You'll take your wings out and head that way. Hector, what yep. are we doing? Uh, yelling for Kejo, jumping on Icaros, Yotir, and the fuck out of there. Okay. Are you saying you want Kejo on Icaros? Yeah. I'm going to jump on Icaros, and I'm going to yell out for him to take my hand, throw him on back, and then okay. shoot up with Icaros straight up. All right. You do that, Rona. Um, did I hear them chit-chatting? Oh, yeah. I would have said it through the bracelet, not to, like, alert Okay. So I'm going to toss Eld on the broom, too. So he has that if he needs it. Oh, all right. An extra set of wings. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm going to offer my hand out to Eclipse to put her on the back of Abe. Oh, I pop up. I'm what? I'm angry. And, <laughs> and <laughs> we're going. Right. And when she does that, I'm going to cast <clears throat> Spirit Guardians. <clears throat> Dark, sorry. Yeah, Spirit Guardians Um, at level three. Okay. And it's going to follow us. Okay, all right. Um, oh, I see what you were looking for. Spell remember wise. that. Yeah, so it's going It's going to be like flanking. Okay. And like, what side of you? All like the little kitties, just like little cute little kitties. They're little like vampire kitty <laughs> And as cats. they attack, they just like turn to the void and their mouths open up and try to look. Oh, yeah, like <laughs> they're cute little I puffy kittens it. and then they're just laser beasts, but like <laughs> the angry adult one. Right. Like they go from being cute and tiny to like I'm gonna eat you for breakfast. Beautiful. So what side of you? What side of me are you on? I'm in front door and back. Okay. Yeah, you're, on, you're, on the, you're on the you're on the dire wolf. She okay. could be on the stretcher. So she's facing front. I'm facing back. <laughs> okay, so you're back to back. Yeah. So okay. we're back to back. I've got both scimitars out. Kind of cool. Which okay. is super cute because these go out to 15 <laughs> feet, so they're surrounding both of us. Yeah, and my tail is <laughs> like awesome. curled around her, so I'm like. This is the true test for Abe, whether he'll get distracted or not. <laughs> no, he'll get distracted. <laughs> um, anyways, he, as... he, all of our allies are not affected by them. All right. But his ADHD might be affected by them. That's all we're saying. I mean, yeah. So Cut. as you guys I head to. off to the left towards the, the scream, yeah. you approach the wall, and those that fly, you are beginning to go <laughs> over the wall at this point. Cerseus and Hector are in a dexterity saving throw. I would have taken the right wall. Would I be getting uh, any bonuses go. from Hector? Uh, sure. Yeah. You went forward, I went up, right? Oh, you, no, I went up. you just went up. It's actually just Cerseus' uh, dexterity saving throw. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, uh, 20. <laughs> An object is flown right at you. Perception check. Probably poo. <laughs> Call back. Uh, you have any poo? Fling it now. Stop it. It's the body of Brayla. <gasps> no, no, no. <laughs> I'm going to catch it. <laughs> okay. Uh, like, roll me a dexterity well, saving throw. Oh, no. It's the pooed Piper's made his return, and no. he's mad. Get out of here. Get oh, out of here. no. That's <laughs> a six. That's a six. No, 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 Before no, no, you no. realize that you try to reach, and there is no life in it to grab back. She has flown down, lands in front of Abe. Abe just barely able to like kind of vault over her and last minute. I'm gonna minute. like pull his reins back. Kerrigan runs up to her, leans I, over. Yeah, I'll drop off of Abe mm -hmm. when that happens. Okay. Because I can see it. Yeah. And I'm rushing to her. Okay. As this happens, Still my Cerseus, guardians. you turn back to face what? What the hell threw Brayla? 
And have you ever seen a death slot before? Oh. Cerseus, I don't think it has. Well. All right. Then. Oh no. A demonic, near ten foot tall creature stands in front of you. And I need initiative. Damn. From who? Everyone? Oh yeah. No, I just had to ask. Be like, no, only Cerseus. This Everyone's getting a one on one fight. It's going to be a big one. My level two character has a higher initiative than my level Hello. a million. Ah, damn. Uh, your boy's rolling with a 22. Okay. Rona. Four. <laughs> hey, healers need to go last. It's important right. for everyone. Eclipse. 18. Hector. 13. <clears throat> Cerseus. Oh, sorry. Uh, 15. I'm looking at this. Icarus will be on uh, your initiative, and uh, Abe will be on your initiative. Right now, he's just a mount. Oh. Ah, okay. We need to hire some drummer boys for uh, Siege of Iron Crest. <laughs> Be like, drum line, take it away. Let's see if we can convince Southern Prime. To <laughs> they come stand outside line. and play. Yeah. All right. Just play outside the door. So, <laughs> to start this off, Eldon, you turn after you hear the body of Brayla hit the ground and roll in the trench where you were all just standing a moment ago. You look up to see Cerseus, wings outstretched, facing down a slot, a similar slot to the one that you faced yesterday. Okay. No, yeah. same day. <laughs> Was it today? Yeah, it's the same day. Earlier today. <laughs> ah! What is time before, before sleep? <laughs> um, time before the loop. And uh, you see it only 10 feet away from him. What do you do? Uh, so I just want to make sure there's none on the right side of the wall, they're just all on the left. Uh, that you see right now, you see that one. Okay. Uh, Unless you want to use your action for perceiving. Uh, how far away is it from me? The one that uh, is in front of Cersei is probably 30 feet. Uh, I'm just going to fly up to it. And uh, as I'm like getting close, I'll cut off the boots. Just enough to like help this in and it's coming out with yeah. one heavy slice. Okay. Nice. Uh, the 26. 26 will hit. God, what is it? Uh, <laughs> uh, 14 points of damage. All right. Uh, as the sword uh, hits on the chest, I'll skid by and come for a uh, stab to the back of its knee. Okay. Uh, with a 29 to hit. Hit. Damn it. Another 14 points of damage. Okay. Uh, and then going for... Uh, try to stab it through the heart. Okay. Uh, 31 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Uh, 16 points of damage. Okay. Uh, all of this slashing. I don't know if that is important to you. It's always important. All right, then I'll say it out loud. <laughs> always important. Oops. Okay, so with a flurry of attacks, you fly up towards it. You stop your uh, momentum enough to <coughs> drop down on this thing. And with three quick attacks, just barely landing, you are able to deal some damage to the slot, but it, like you, is quick, just like someone, just like the ones you fought earlier today. Um, anything else for your turn? Uh, bonus action, I'm gonna expend the charge from the Moonblade okay. to uh, just try and blind it. Okay, uh, I will need Cerseus to roll for this as well. What's the range? 30 feet. 30 feet, so Cerseus will have to roll as well. Uh, it's Constitution 15. Okay, it will pass. No. Oh. With a 20. I pass with 17. All right, no one's blind, but wow, is it pretty. 
Hold on, let me <laughs> check something. Let me check something. See if you go blind. No. Oh. Uh. Do that thing where every time you attack something, it has to roll all of its saves with disadvantage. Uh, this isn't <laughs> this isn't a spell considered, correct? No. All right, then never mind. Nothing. Okay. This one feature I never get to use. Isn't that the Eldritch Knight thing? You can like yeah, Eldritch they, Strike. They if a... I hit it, it has disadvantage on the next save before the end of its turn when I oh. use the spell. So that's why I was like, oh wait, hold on, I hit it first. Your turn. Oh, it's my turn. <laughs> You're up, Clips. So this is like a completely dead, dead body. Yes. Okay, just making sure. I didn't want to be like, oh, she had like a breath of health left and then just Aha, dies. Heal. But okay. Um, let's see. I am going to go through and let's see. Cass, is it within sixty feet? What, her? No, the slot thing. Uh, yes, it would be. Yep. Okay. Uh, I'm going to cast Sacred Flame. Oh, yeah. Um, so it needs to make the deck save. Okay. All right. That is a 21. Oh, yeah, no, that, that passed without an issue. Um, <clears throat> my little guardians are still flitting around us, by the way. Okay, you got it. Anything else for your turn, Eclipse? Um, with that being said, anyone that's in that area is fine. Okay. Um, so but, in, in the area of your guardians? Or? Yeah, of my guardians. It'd be you, Abe, and... Uh, Rona for right now. Okay. Um, I guess Ambrella's corpse, if you're over there. Yeah. But you hopped off, Abe, and moved I'm, over. like, right behind him. Yeah. I, like, I slid off his butt, and I'm, like, backed up again. Okay. It. All right. So, um, after you. Oh, um, I'm going to ask through the bracelet. Are we trying to still stay quiet or nah? <laughs> Going low! <laughs> you see this giant metal. just screams out. <laughs> no! Like I, I, I guess quiet? I'll I guess I just ask that loud enough for Rona to hear. Alright. Um, it is the slob's turn. It is going to launch itself. Guys, Eclipse's uh costume comes with a cat. It does. Only you. Okay. Live. You're the aggressor. You're for right now. Alright. Held on. Oh, hold on. You're, you're still good to go. I took off a bonus up. Uh, First attack on you, I don't believe, hits with an 18. Nope. Okay. Second attack is a 27. Nope. nope. Oh, my God. The what? scrolls last 24 hours. <laughs> it has been less than 24 hours since <laughs> I've It's true. And, uh, that's a uh, 13. Nope. So... <laughs> it, 27. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it strikes mm -hmm. at you, and Eldon, in his full true form, his final form, just uh, This is an evil, my final form! <laughs> you defend and bat away every claw and bite in your direction. Very nicely done. Cersei, it's your turn. All right. Uh, Cersei is going to turn to it and cast Toll the Dead. Okay. Which is a wisdom saving throw of 21. I'm assuming it doesn't have uh, wisdom. Okay. As you cast this spell, lightning strikes down from above. Oh, layer actions. <clears throat> Cerseus, you are going to take eight lightning damage. Uh, what you and get? The magic of your spell is snuffed out. <gasps> oh, so. Oh. All right, you know what? Because you tried that crap on me, minus two sorcery points, I'm doing it again. Okay. <laughs> you think you can get away that easily? It happens again. I'm sorry. <sighs> it's been a right now. Does lightning just strike him again? Yes. Like, <laughs> lightning oh, yeah, struck twice. <laughs> No. That is 12. Hey, have you ever um, heard of the spell, screw this one guy in particular? 
with uh, the <laughs> times you were casting spells. Oh, I did? Yeah. Just so you know, uh, I, I totally didn't just target Cerseus. <laughs> Uh, man, was, I wasted. Uh... <laughs> hey, at least you did cantrips. So be careful. Hey, and you know what? Points. Yeah, thank goodness. But you know what? I found out Toll the Dead, whenever someone doesn't have points, it's now a D12. Yeah. I yeah. didn't ever right. think about that. Yep. Yeah, whenever they, uh, they, whenever they take damage, it does like a bunch. Of... <sighs> well, I got that nothing your... now. I guess I'm going to just stay my distance. Okay, you stay your distance. Hector, you're up. Oh, I forgot to roll for you. Uh, yes, I am. I am above Kejo would be Kejo's uh, initiative is with you right now. <laughs> Everyone's on Hector's uh... initiative. Oh, excuse me. Oh, Alex, what damage did I take on that second one? You took 12. 12. 12? Okay. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Hector. Yeah, I would. I still continuing with my original plan of flying straight up. And then scouting the ridge, I guess. Okay. Securing the flank. You fly up. Go ahead. Um, because of the storm and the rain, roll me a perception check. Uh, the DC is going to be a little high. Uh, Kajo will check with you since your turns are kind of uh, together. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Never mind. I was gonna see if I could just Icaros gets perception. He gets a he gets a and I was thinking I'll just tell him to hunt. <laughs> I mean we can do it that way if you want to. Oh, yep. Sure. Have fun with it. Um 17, or so 17 plus 5, 22. For uh, Icarus Perception? Yeah. All right. As you kind of fly up and level out to where uh, Icarus can look down again. Oh, you's here too? Stop cross-referencing. <laughs> Stop just, cross-referencing. We're crossing the streets. We're here now. Um, <laughs> but as you, as, as he level... As Icaros levels out to where he can see below, he target locks kind of two of them. And as you look down, you can see four more for a total of seven right now. Two, four more, and then the one you're attacking. Sorry, my bad. So, I was like, wait. Um, <laughs> that's what you see. And Eldon, uh, or Hector, you know these things are tough. The children of Skyreus, the warriors that are there, you can also see from uh, how high up you are, they are moving down, uh, pushing the tower. And you can see a couple of these slides getting ready to leap onto them from above. So, um, I will say... That is an action. What would you like to do next? Uh, if I already used my action, the best thing I could do is use the rest of whatever Icarus's movement has left of trying to intercept those. The slots. Yeah. Okay. All right. And you nosedive down and try to do that. Uh, you are going to get close and you will be able to attack uh, this next round. It's just a, so there's two on one side, four on the other, and then there's one in the middle that is engaged with held on. Okay. So. As you guys uh, are heading up into, I'm, I'm the tower. Hi. Nice to meet you. As you guys are heading up this path, up to the tower, there's the walls on the side. Hector, you were down here and you headed up. The first slot was off to the side, threw Brayla down towards you. That's the first one you saw. As you head up, you see two more. I didn't specify what sides they were on, but they're spread evenly, three and three in total. Two, two, two more here, and then four more beyond them. So 
you see three on this side, three on this side, and then you have the one uh, closest down to where Brayla was thrown over, where uh, Eldon is engaged right now. So, as you come back down, you're going to try to intercept uh, kind of the the first ones that are going to meet the uh, children of Skyrays. And as you are on the way there, it goes over to another slot, one that has not been seen, because he rolled pretty high. So, you. As you are uh, kind of leaning over Brayla, you look up on the opposite side ridge, and you see a monstrous grin look down at you before it leaps and lunges right at you. A death slot. First attack on you. Is it 19? Nope. Okay. As it jumps down, it goes to bite <coughs> you. And your quick feline humanoid reflexes. You uh, back out of the way. It then swipes at you with a, uh, a 19 again, which is a no. And then uh, finally, one last time, a 27. Ouch. <laughs> No. What happens with spirit guardians when someone bumps into it? Yeah, so how's it work? Uh, oh, oh yeah. We get okay, like so, less speed. Um, the... Which one is this? Wrong spell. Sorry. I was like, this doesn't make sense. Toll of what? Um, uh, so when it initially comes into like the area around me, its speed is halved. Okay. Um it must make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. And on a failed save, it's going to take... Yeah, my alignment's still good. It was um, an 18 for wisdom. Uh, that is my... Then it will just barely pass. Mofo. Uh, they're going to take half as much then, so it's going to take half of the 3d8 radiant. Okay. Roll that real fast, and then we'll jump into the damage that I dealt to you. Thirteen total. Thirteen halved. Yeah. Okay. And then. All right. You are going to take eleven slashing damage and eight necrotic damage, but I believe necrotic for you is halved. That's fine. Yeah. So what was it, 11 and then? Yeah, 11 slashing, 8 necrotic, and then I'll let you do the math on dividing. Yeah, I'm just going to uh, do that so individually because math is not. Um, But that is the only hit that it gets on you. But now, standing over Brayla is this death slot. So after that, it is Keijo's turn. Uh, he's just going to hold action for when you're ready, Hector, and he will uh, do his barbarian thing. So he will attack with you. A spear is launched from the dark beyond. Oh. To the slot that is engaged with you. Oh. For a 27 to hit. Nasty. You watch as the Black Knight, Maxon, throws the spear at the slot. It does embed. He runs up with his shield, kind of lunges himself at this death slot, grabs the spear, uses the shield to kind of hit it as he pulls it back out, goes for one final jab at him. That will hit, and he deals just a little bit more damage. You have Maxon by your side. So that's tech. We're flanking. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um. Rona. You're actually not last. Kerrigan's last. <laughs> hey, anything's better than dead last. So what would you like to do? If you ain't yeah, first, you're dead. last. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, we're gonna try this little new toy I got. Um, 
I would like to hop down off of uh, for Icaros, Abe, uh, and walk up to this death slot that's in front of me. Okay. And I'm going to activate my Black Rose. Okay. Oh, so there's one in... <sighs> like this? No, it's the one that just smacked the crap out of you. Yeah. Oh, okay. We're, we're together. Yeah. The okay. one that is attacking you is actually on your level. Right yeah, now. and I'm behind Abe. Yes. Yeah, yep. so it's... Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. I gotta remember how to do this a little bit. Um, oh, I wonder if necrotic damage doesn't do anything to these guys. Who knows? Uh, we'll find out. Okay. I don't uh, like that. On traumatic. Ouch. Nineteen to hit. Hit. Okay. If necrotic damage doesn't do anything, and I use both the dead on it. <laughs> Where do you do that? Yeah, someone's going by. <laughs> I imagine it's uh, it's like uh. I forget the movie, but I think it's, uh, oh, what is that is 14 necrotic, nine radiant plus seven, so plus another seven. I need you to add all that up for me. Yeah, that was a <laughs> lot of... Say that one numbers. more time. <laughs> 14 necrotic. Okay. Nine. Nine plus seven is yes. 16 mm -hmm. radiant. Okay. All right. It's got it. Okay. Wow. So that bit. was enough. Okay. I'll keep going. Again. 14 plus 15 is like 29. Yeah. So I don't get the 2d8 again. Don't? No, I only get it per attack. What about your the bonus? What? No. We are very different clerics. <laughs> she gets that. I uh, forgot about that. Extra divine damage. What yeah, you she, got? she get the healing. Eleven plus seven. Eighteen. Necrotic. Okay. And by the way, the necrotic damage does not seem to be mitigated. Hey, look at that. Wow. Critical fail. Oh. The only thing that could have stopped I you. I had ears. The only thing, literally, the only thing that could have stopped you. The darn one. You don't, you don't have a defense. Yeah, I can use it on one weapon attack. So as you oh, guys okay. are uh, engaging this uh, slot, is that the rest of your turn? You're stand, standing there. That was my bonus action. action. Uh, bonus action. Um, I don't think I've really, let's see, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, I think, um, we're good. Okay. Yeah, All right. Good. Last but not least, Damn. Kerrigan Stormcaller. Mr. Storm. Just ah, runs up with the ax towards the slot that is, is, is in combat the... with you guys. Misses. Is this thing just <laughs> surrounded now on all four sides? Pretty much. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> he misses the first slot. I guess when it like when it dodged that attack by you, that last attack, you and Kerrigan, for your crit fail flavor, um, you and Kerrigan's weapons get entangled briefly, um, because that was a crit <laughs> fail for him too. Oh, <laughs> it no. works out really well, I think. Um, mm -hmm. But entangled briefly, uh, you guys uh, quickly separate. And he goes in for his second attack, which will hit, and he does do a wallop on him. Wallop. So, with uh, that damage done, that will end this first round. One more lightning strike. Lights up the sky. Hector, upon your descent, You look towards the tower. There's a balcony some ways up. Standing on the balcony, you see a figure. Granted, it is still far away. This is no dwarf. This is no woman. 
almost not really human either. But it is slender and very familiar. Kind of parallaxy. You know this figure. You have seen them before. And a vision about how a certain Ennius Day for lost his job, was imprisoned, and replaced by the one you see ahead of you. Dang. And that's where we're going to end this session. <laughs> oh. So, I think it might be best to have a map for this next time. Because this is about to be a... Uh... Roasty toasty. Yeah. I'm so confused. <laughs> um, so, next time we come back, we're going to have uh, combat start us right off. And we'll see what happens uh, with this fella in the tower. Next time. But <laughs> until then, thank you uh, so much for watching, Traveler. We hope you enjoyed. Until next time, stay safe out there, Traveler, and keep moving forward. <laughs>